Donald Trump says he won't drop out of the race for the Republican nomination, even if he were to be indicted. The former president is involved in multiple federal and state investigations, of course. Georgia prosecutors are looking into his efforts to overturn his 2020 election loss in that state. The Department of Justice is investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol, as well as Trump's handling of classified documents after he left office. And joining me now is Trump's uh, former lawyer and fixer, Michael Cohen. He's the author of Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Critics and host of the Mea Culpa podcast. Uh, Michael, great to see you. I mean, I, I guess there's really no surprise here that Trump is insisting an indictment will not stop him from running. I, I suppose with his base, it, it, it will be like more catnip. Yeah, Jim, what that is, that's the Donald Trump fake tough guy talk, whereby uh, I don't care what anybody thinks that they're going to do to me. You could indict me. You can come after me. Uh, it's not going to sway me and it's not going to prevent me from running. Unfortunately for Donald, what he doesn't seem to understand, or maybe he does, he's just not trying to show it, is that nobody cares what he thinks. Tish James, our, you know, unsinkable attorney general, is continuing, and I believe they have Wadir starting at the end of this month. So he, despite whatever he thinks, is going to be involved in that litigation. On top of that, if Alvin Bragg uh, decides to indict and move forward, he will be involved in that litigation as well, whether or not he wants to again play, you know, um, his truth social tough guy. On top of that, you have the January 6th hearings and you have so many right. other litigations that are now pending against him. There's absolutely nothing that he could do about it. Nothing. Yeah, well, let me ask you that just since you brought it up. Uh, you've been speaking with the Manhattan DA's office uh, in the investigation of the uh, payments aimed at covering up Trump's alleged affair with uh, Stormy Daniels. How close do you think that case is to uh, some kind of resolution, maybe an indictment? Do you think that's soon? Yeah, so, Jim, um, I, I don't want to um, acknowledge or, uh, you know, disagree with your statement about what the district attorney is specifically looking at. Um, okay. Obviously, everybody knows about the hush money payment, but I don't suspect that that's the only thing that they're looking at. Uh, I am going back again for additional prep, uh, for grand jury prep. I am very confident, and I suspect that Alvin Bragg and his uh, really fine team of prosecutors believe that there is enough within which to uh, charge Donald Trump. Now, again, that's Alvin Bragg's decision. I think that they finally see what Mark Pomerantz and Carrie Dunn saw about a year ago, but, you know, now it's Alvin Bragg's turn. And Just right stay now tuned, things I are guess. moving very quickly over there. Stay yeah. tuned is right. All right. And I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there, but and I want to talk about CPAC <laughs> because you used to go with Trump to CPAC. How surprising was it to see him winning that straw poll, giving the headliner speech, despite all these investigations into his actions before, during and after his presidency? Did you think that he would be at this point right now? <laughs> By the way. It's like going to a bingo parlor. You're the only one there. And hey, I won bingo. He's the only one that's there. I mean, other than Nikki Haley, who else has announced? You know, CPAC right now is not the CPAC of before when actually I think I saw you there uh, and so yeah. many other people. That place was packed wall to wall people. If you look to see Don's, uh, the Donald speech that's there, 60% of the room is completely void. There's, you know, there's empty chairs everywhere. When I was there with him, there was standing room only. Now all of a sudden you're playing to probably 45% of what the general crowd is. This entire CPAC, like Matt Schlapp, like um, Dave Bossy and the whole rest of the crew, it's meaningless. It doesn't tell you anything. And the fact, again, that he won the straw poll again, is like, you know, he's the only guy at the bingo parlor and he wins. It doesn't mean anything. Got it. All right, well, and I mean, last <laughs> night, but the speech last night, Michael, I mean, you've heard some of this rhetoric before, but it does seem to be ratcheted up. Um, he's dubbing himself the candidate of retribution. That's what he said last night. What does that say to you? It says that, Jim, you and I could have a lot of problems if, in fact, this lunatic ends up uh, becoming president again, which I still maintain. I don't even think that Donald's going to get the nomination. Now, I know everybody says, no, 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 you know, he has such a strong 
hold over like 28 percent of the Republican Party. What we're seeing right now is Donald Trump's popularity. Believe it or not, it's it's decreasing on a steady basis. And as more of these indictments, of more of these charges continue to be mounted against him, and he starts to really feel the pressure of what's called accountability, uh, I don't believe that Donald is going to be the but, nominee. And but, I think that you're going to see somebody new come out of the woodwork. And I think that's who you're going to see a lot of support coming for. Right now, yeah, it's just Donald. Yeah, quick follow-up, though, on that, Michael, and that is we saw one potential candidate, Larry Hogan, the former governor of Maryland, uh, say he's not going to run. It does look as though this is going to be a smaller field than we've seen in years past. It sounds, and if you look at what Nikki Haley and Mike Pompeo were doing at CPAC, not really calling out Trump by name, sort of tiptoeing around him, uh, where are the candidates who are just going to go up and confront Trump face-to-face? -face? It's just not happening at this point. Doesn't that make it easier for well, him to win the nomination? To the, to the contrary, the fewer people that are there in that race, the better the chances are that that individual wins uh, the specific state. The more people that are in, the more it gets divided, and it's a winner-take-all. Now, the thing with Larry Hogan, I bet most of your viewers, you say, well, who is Larry Hogan? Most of them have no idea who he is. The guy had no name recognition. Wait till you start to see down the road as they get closer to the um, nomination process, you'll start to see better named, better recognized named people start to enter the race. And again, I still feel very confident that all of these indictment and charges, though Donald will definitely want to be the nominee because he'll then make the claim that you can't come after him. He's a presidential candidate, despite the fact that that doesn't exonerate him or prevent the litigation from continuing. All right. <laughs> Michael Cohen, you got a point there, we'll be, and we'll be talking about that, I'm sure, in the days and weeks and months to come, because that is not going anywhere. Uh, Michael Cohen, great to see you again, as always. Thanks so much. Great to see you, too, Jim, always.